Okay, so supposedly I'm live streaming this on YouTube right now. So I'm going to try to do that every time. And so if you are the group that has to like stay home that day, you can still tune in live if you want to. And it, you could even throw something in the chat and I might even look at it, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, you don't have to watch that one live if you don't want to. You could always watch it later or something, but you're welcome to if you want to be able to like uh, join in. Here's uh, people have been asking me about what if I bought a electronic copy of the book? How does that work? And for that to work, you have to log into Pearson on my math lab or my lab. Uh, and then there's some uh, at one point you'll be prompted to enter a course number. And this is the course number, Willis 99337. So if you have got the electronic copy, that will get you in. Okay, that's the course number that you need. I'm gonna email that out to everybody later today, but I got it working, it's all good to go. So you should be able to use that. Um, okay, so obviously things are a little bit different. Uh, we are, meeting about two thirds of us at a time. And so every day, uh, two out of three days a week, everybody will get to come to class. So that's pretty good. And I'm really liking this, not using a mic thing. It's uh, actually a great blessing to me. This is how I'm used to teaching. So this is better. I have a nice board space. So life is wonderful for me again as a calculus professor trying to teach on that little tiny like postage stamp of a board was going to drive me mentally insane. So we're back and I feel good about it. So hopefully you do too. Um, so what do I want to do with these times that we have together? Uh, I think that it's going to be a little bit more guided by all of you then it would normally be guided by me because all of the lectures are online. And if, has everybody been on the YouTube channel and kind of checked it out a little bit? Okay, you should get on there and you'll see that like I link you to a playlist and that playlist usually has about nine videos. The first video is always the lecture, like the theoretical lecture of what we're doing that day. And then the next like seven or eight videos will always be example problems. That's actually a lot more than I typically would cover in class. So even like last class period, after like talking about area between curves, I had time to do about two example problems and then we were done. So this is actually superior in the sense that I'll get to show you more problems. Uh, and that's good, I think. Uh, but what it does is it makes this time that we have together, you're going to have to kind of bring me material in some sense. And it's like, if you haven't done any of the homework, it's not going to be as helpful for you. So what I want to do is I want to start posting online. I'm going to kind of say, these are the sections that I'm kind of assuming, and maybe I'll even send out an email at the beginning of each week, kind of saying, this is kind of what I'm expecting that you've looked at when you come to class and you'll be ready to ask me some questions about. It. So I'll try to stay like a little bit behind, like there'll be due dates. And I'll assume that you'll probably be asking me questions about the thing that's due that day. Or, but I won't have something due every single day, depending on how fast we go. So anyway, just be aware that on Foxtail, I'll be putting things on there kind of to guide you in like, what should you have prepped for to come to class to get the most out of it? Okay. In terms of like, do I have to, this is a natural question. I think when we're moving to this format, it's kind of like, Hey, you're online. I'm sitting in my dorm room. I just don't feel like moving very much. I still have my pajamas on. Do I have to come to class if you're going to put this on YouTube anyway? Well, no ish. I would really like it if you came. Okay. I think that I, I'm, we're going to get to know each other a little bit better if you're actually here and seeing me face to face than if you're just sitting in your dorm room all semester and I never see you again. 
That said, if you're kind of a little bit under the weather or it's kind of like, hey, uh, I'm going, let's say you had a trip planned or a school activity or something was going on where you needed to get out of town early on Friday and you're just like, I'm just going to watch the video that he posts. That's fine. I I'm not going to like count you absent. Uh, so I'm going to kind of assume that you are doing the work. Now, the way that I'm going to be able to know is, well, have you done the homework and how do you perform on the tests? The tests are still going to be taken here in class, okay, except for the final. So, um, so you will have to show up for your exam and they're probably going to have to be more than one day for the exam because we just can't all be in this room at the same time. Unless I decide we'll find a way to go up to like Woodmar or something, but they don't have very good discs. Anyway, it's not the greatest. Uh, we'll probably do our exams in here. Um, let's see. We're really going to have to be, there's one right here that somebody can sit in in front. There's one on that far side in the front. And then does anybody else see another one? Maybe. Are those supposed to be like usable? Weird. Okay. Yeah, so you uh, probably not right there, but if you scoot it over to the side a little bit, it should be good. Okay. So, um, any questions about how that's all going to work? Yeah. Not about how it's going to work next time. For sure. What's it, what is it? Um, uh, 6.2 number 15, did you say? Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, somebody asked about 6.2 number 15. So, my, my confusion on it is it doesn't look like that it gave you minus from one of them um, on the integration. It's going to give you the area you want. I feel like you yep. can use these two integrations. Yep, you're exactly right. Let me show you. So, um, in this case, you have a uh, sine of x, which is this curve, right? And then you also have cosine of x, which here's one. It kind of comes down like this. This is cosine of x. And the uh, area that we're looking for is right here. They also give you that this is pi over 2, right? And they want you to find... Uh, the area under the curve. Sound good? Okay, so this is problem number 15, and they want to know, so how much area is in the shaded region? Yeah, you're exactly right. You cannot do it with one integral. Now, if we were to look at it as this is, if, as function, so to speak, of y, uh, in other words, if I solved cosine of x equals y, and sine of x equals y for x, and thought of them as functions of y, then there actually is always a top function and a bottom function. But I don't want to because I don't want to take like the antiderivative of cosine inverse of x. You know what I mean? That's not very nice. So just because the functions are pretty simple to integrate right now, I think I just want to split it. So what I mean by that is, what is this, where does this happen? So what's that x value? Yeah, uh, pi over 4, right? It's basically where is sine of x and cosine of x the same value? And that happens at pi over 4. By the way, what is that value up here? Root two. Yeah, it's root 2 over 2, right? Okay. So yeah, but now that I've split it, if I think of this as one region that I want to find, and then this is another region that I want to find, then this is pretty straightforward. And actually, I don't even need like a top function and a bottom function. There's just like a top function and I guess the bottom function is zero, right? So the area here would just be the integral from, well, we're starting at zero, ending at pi over four, of, well, the top function minus the bottom function, but the bottom function is just y equals zero. So it's just sine of x dx. And then I want to add on the other piece, this piece over here, where I'm integrating from pi over 4 to pi over 2. 
of this one's cosine of x dx. And that will get the job done, that integration. Uh, do you want me to keep going? No. Yeah, okay. This uh, Everybody sort of get that. So in this case, you don't actually even need a top function and a bottom function. You just need to break it up into those two pieces, and then it's pretty straightforward. Yes, sir? I heard 21. 21, sure. Okay. Number 21, we have uh, x and y axis. We have some sort of a parabola type thing here. And that is x equals y squared minus 3. Okay. And then we have, oh, wait a second, 21. Sorry, wrong. It's x equals 2y squared. And then I get a line that kind of does this sort of thing. And that line is y equals 2 minus x over 2. y equals 2 minus x over 2. And then we want to find that area. Okay, perfect. So here's the thing. Uh, I can either look at this as like some things on top and some things on bottom, or I can look at it as some things on the right and some things on the left. Which is better for me here? Yeah. It, there's nothing technically wrong with saying top and bottom but it's really messy. And why I say that is, okay, because here, this function is on top, and this function is on bottom, and then it changes right here, right? And it switches to this function is on top, and this function is on bottom, agreed? But if I look at it as one's on the right and one's on the left, and you just kind of make a horizontal line, this function's always on the top, this function's always on the bottom. But if I look at it as right and left, then I really need it to be x equals a function of y. Right, so we gotta make sure that both of the functions are written that way. The parabola on its side is written that way. So that's good. This guy, not so good, right? It's not written the correct way. So I need to solve that equation for x. Okay, if I did that, then I get what? Uh, y minus 2 is minus x over 2. And then I just need to multiply both sides by negative 2. So I get negative 2y uh, plus 4 equals x. Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Okay, so I've got this function, which is the parabola. I've got this function which is the line. Now again, the question is, which one's the one that's on top? The line or the parabola? Yeah, the line. So if I look at the horizontal line right here, the top one is always on the right, right? So the line's on top, the parabola's on bottom. So now I can go, oh, uh, I also need to know, well, what if, if that's the case, what's this Y value? And what's this y value? And I'm pretty sure they don't just give it to you, do they? Nope. So we've got to find out where those two intersect in terms of um, y values. So we just need to set them equal to each other and solve for y. So if I set them equal to each other, I get 2y squared is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Uh, or if I rewrote that, it's 2y squared um, plus 2. Why did I write no x right there? It's not good. Negative 2y plus 4. Then I get plus 2y 
minus 4 equals 0. I could factor out a 2 if I want to. So I get 2 times y squared plus y minus 2 equals 0. Now I could factor it. Uh, how does that factor? Yes. Yeah, y plus 2, y minus 1 is correct. And then that means that y is going to either be 1 or minus 2. Okay, so we can look here. y equals 1 must be here. y equals negative 2 must be here. And now we're ready to set up this integral. So let me move over here real quick. So now my area is equal to uh, the integral from negative 2 to 1 of the top function minus the bottom function. Okay, the top function in this case we decided was the line. The line is otherwise known as negative 2y plus 4. So we've got negative 2y plus 4 minus the bottom function. And the bottom function is the parabola 2y squared. So 2y squared, all of that dy. Okay, let's just go ahead since we're so close. Uh, let me rewrite it a little bit just to make it a little cleaner. I still have negative 2 to 1 on my integral. Uh, I'll write the 2y squared first so I have a negative 2y squared. Uh, then I have a minus 2y plus 4 dy. Now I'm ready to take an antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of negative 2y squared? Yeah, so negative 2y cubed divided by 3, right? Or negative 2 thirds y cubed. How about this one? Yeah, minus y squared, right? Because I bump the power up, divide by the 2, and the 2's cancel. And then finally, plus 4y. All of that evaluated from negative 2 to 1. Okay, plug it in. And we plug in 1, we get negative 2 thirds. Uh, we plug in 1, we get minus 1. Plug in 1, I get plus 4. Minus, then we plug in negative 2. Cube negative 2 to get negative 8. Times negative 2 thirds. So negative 8 times negative 2 thirds would be positive 16 thirds. So this is 16 thirds. Plug in negative 2, square it is 4, times negative is negative 4. And then negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Sound good? Okay, uh, let's combine things. I suppose I could turn everything into thirds if I wanted to, but I'm lazy right now and maybe I won't need to. Let's see. So uh, first of all, we've got, let's deal with the thirds, and then we'll deal with everything else. So I've got negative 2 thirds minus an additional 16 thirds, which is minus 18 thirds, or otherwise known as negative 6. Yeah. So this is minus 6. Uh, and then what else do I have? I have minus 1 plus 4. So that's 3. I'll just write that down, plus 3. And then over here I have minus minus 12. Okay, so this is minus 12 times a minus is positive 12. Does that seem right to everybody? Okay, so we've got 12 plus 3, 15, minus 6, 9. <clears throat> 
So um, this area now, again, this is a good time to reiterate that coming back over here and kind of seeing, does that seem plausible? Is not like the worst. So what happens if I did plug in minus two over here, what do I get? I guess I get eight, right? So up here, this is at eight. Everybody agree? So look at this box. What's the area of that box? It's how many by how many? Three by eight, which is 24. And this is not, this it takes up roughly like a third-ish of that box. So does nine seem plausible? Very much so, right? So that's a really good exercise to get into is to say, does this make any sense? Again, if I came out with 900 and then I looked at that box and said, well, I know the answer is less than 24 and I got 900. It's like, I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, so that's a nice way to check your work. It's just kind of say, does that make any sense relative, and especially if you got something like negative two? Right, the area is not negative two. Okay, uh, I don't get angry about very many things in life, but when somebody puts like on an exam that the area of the region is negative three, that's one of those things. Right? It's like it isn't. It really isn't. Okay. Um, question? Yeah. Uh, Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Is everybody good with this one? Any questions before I move on? Good? Okay, 24. Let me erase a little bit here. Okay, number 24. Let me see. Okay. Yes. So we have uh, two functions here. We have this something that does this sort of thing. Okay, and that is um, x equals two cosine y. Okay, and then we have another it kind of does a wave here. Um, goes higher. That sort of thing. And that is equal to, that's x equals 2 sine of 2y. x equals 2 sine of 2y. Okay, and then we want to find the area trapped between the two. So we've kind of got this little area up here, then we've got kind of this bigger area over here. Okay, again, this is where we would ask the question, what makes more sense to us to think of this from right to left, like this, or to think of this from top to bottom? like this. Yeah. Right to left. Yeah, I totally agree. Right to left makes sense. Top to bottom, it's actually like a big fat mass, right? There's all sorts of things on top of other things. It just doesn't make any sense. But if you think of it from right to left, it makes a lot more sense, except for the fact that they cross, right? And the fact that they cross means that we're going to have to have two integrals here, because in this little portion, this one's on top, this one's on bottom. And then from here to here, this function's on top, this function's on the bottom. Agreed? So what is the first thing we really need to know? Yeah, the intersection, right? What y value do these intersect at? By the way, do we know this point and this point? Does it tell us or is it kind of mean? It's mean, that's fine. Uh, but is it obvious? 
Yeah, this is like, uh, this is a, a, a cosine wave right here. So a cosine wave is one here and then it's zero where? Where is cosine equal to zero for the first time? Pi over two? Yes, yeah, so pi over two. And then that means that this is minus pi over two. Okay, and then the question, so we've got this one, we've got this one, we need the intersection of the two. So we want to set them equal to each other and solve for y, unless there's like some way to just like obviously see it. That's always a good thing to do when you're doing these because sometimes solving for something like this where we have a y and over here we have a 2y, it's not like just jumping out, but is there something that just like makes sense? Pi over four, let's think about that for a second. Do you like it or not like it? No? Okay, we can always set them equal to each other and kind of see what happens here, but I have a feeling we're gonna to have to just kind of figure it out for ourselves anyway, but let's look. We can set two cosine of y equal to two sine of 2y. The twos cancel. I could divide both sides by two. So I get cosine of y is sine of 2y. Is that helpful in any way? Eh, not really. I think we just need to kind of think about it for a second. So what about like pi over six? Eh, maybe not. Um, what about no, that's not going to do it either. What if, is it pi over six? It might be, yeah, yeah. So sine of pi over, two times pi over six is pi over three. Sine of pi over three is what? Root three over two. And then what's cosine of pi over six? Root three over two. Hooray. Okay, so we've got y is equal to, we said pi over 6. Yeah. So this is pi over 6. And now we're ready to set up our integral. Okay, so the area that we're looking for, we're going to, remember, go from the bottom up. So we've got negative pi over 2 all the way to pi over 6. So integral negative pi over two, all the way to pi over six, is going to be one function's on top, one function's on the bottom. In this case, the cosine curve is the top curve, and the sine of two, two sine two y is the bottom curve. So I need the top minus the bottom. So I have two cosine y minus 2 sine of 2y, okay, uh, dy, and then I need to add on to that this top piece, correct? So the top piece, let me erase this, we've got plus the integral from pi over six to pi over two, pi over six to pi over two, of, again, the top function minus the bottom function, but up here, the top function is the two sine of two y, and the bottom function is the two cosine y. So I get two sine of two y minus, 2 cosine y dy. So the sum of those two integrals will get the job done. Would it be helpful to keep going? Yes. Okay, I'll take the one yes and go with it. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, so I need to take an antiderivative at this point. So 
I need an antiderivative for two cosine y. The two doesn't matter, it's just a constant. So I need to know what's an antiderivative of cosine of y. I think you've shaded a little bit more than you need to find the area for it. Maybe. It's certainly true. possible. Oh, boo. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's, that is a good thing. Okay. You're absolutely right. They wanted to make what more interesting. So they said not that stuff, just the picture in the problem just has this side. But that's actually going to make our life easier, right? Because instead of it being the cosine function, ah, you jerks. It's a jerk move. It's all right. We'll, we'll do it. It's all good. Uh, Okay, sure. Uh, this is right almost nowhere. Okay, that one is fine. Okay. Okay, so let's start over. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that because it would have given me the wrong answer. Uh, so now we need to go from negative pi over two to zero. And the top function is that the cosine curve, the bottom function is just zero, right? So we're going to integrate from negative pi over two to zero of the top function is two cosine of y. And I suppose I could put in minus zero if I wanted to. I don't want to. So that's just dy. And then I need to add in this little piece right? Just from zero to pi over six. So this is going to be plus integral from zero to pi over six of the top function is the cosine curve. This is two cosine y minus the bottom function is the two sine of two y. Two sine two y dy. And I was able to squeeze it in there. I'm wondering, can they see very good? I hope so. Uh, so, uh, any questions on the setup? Now we have some fun, right? Yes. Uh, that's not the setup. I'm curious, is there a more regimented way to figure out intersection points? It seemed like you were guessing yeah, usually you set them equal to each other and solve for y. Yeah, but cosine, because of this cosine of y, if this was cosine of y and sine of y, then that's not so bad. Because it's cosine of y and sine of 2y, that's not a very nice equation. I mean, it just so happens that we can figure it out, and they were nice to us, whoever was developing this. But if I had some nasty thing in here like 14y and 18y, that wouldn't be so easy. Okay, so uh, there isn't a nice way. With trig functions in general are not very nice to you. But we have these nice angles that we know about. So that's a good way to go. So in general, just try to solve. And if you can't solve, then you might have to guess a little bit. But generally, you can solve. So if I just came into another problem that has something here. Yeah. A little bit, I, like I said, probably like 95% of the time you can solve. So you don't have to worry about this. This just happens to be an interesting situation where you get to here and it's kind of like taking an inverse cosine of both sides isn't where you want to be. You know what I mean? You could, but I don't think it's helpful. You, you know what I mean? If you said that y equals cosine inverse of sine of 2y, I don't think you're in any better position necessarily than what you were before. You hear what I'm saying? So I would say just at this point, I would just say, can I figure this out? And it, in this case, we could. In general, if you couldn't, yeah, graph them, try to find the intersection point. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the setup of this problem before I like try to solve it? 
or any other ways that I drew the picture wrong. <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay, then let's keep going. I need an antiderivative of two cosine of y. I think somebody said, how about two sine of y? That sounds excellent. And so I get uh, two sine y uh, evaluated from negative pi over two to zero. Plus, I guess I'll use parentheses to keep this straight. Uh, Antiderivative, same thing. I got two sine y. Okay, now I should probably think a little bit. I have negative two sine of two y, right? What's the antiderivative of negative two sine of two y? This one you have to think about a little bit. You know that cosine's derivative is negative sine. Okay, that's good because we have a negative. So it's going to involve a cosine of two y, but what should be out in front? If I were taking the derivative, it would be four. So the antiderivative, I'm going to divide by two, which will give me just a one out in front, right? So I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a positive cosine 2y will get the job done. Because the derivative of cosine of 2y is minus sine of 2y times 2 by the chain rule, which is exactly what I have right here. Good to go? So that's from zero to pi over six. Very good, next piece. Uh, okay, the antiderivative of positive two sine of two y. So we just said cosine goes to negative sine. So I'm gonna need it to be negative. So I need um, negative cosine of two y. Does that do it? Negative cosine's derivative is sine of 2y times 2. That's it. Okay. And this one, uh, sine goes to cosine, so it would be negative 2 sine y. Evaluated from pi over 6, pi over 2. So far, so good. Let's plug it in. Okay. Um, plug in the zero. And what do I get? Sine of zero is zero. So this is just zero. Sine of negative pi over two is what? If these don't come quickly, it's time to review the unit circle. Uh, negative one, right? But negative one times two is negative two, so I'm subtracting negative two. I can't emphasize enough that in, uh, parentheses are going to be your best friend on these problems. If you forget your parentheses, it's very, very easy to get a sign wrong. But something that should be helpful is that this integral should be positive. Right? If the number coming out of here is negative, that's probably bad. Okay, so you can see right here that this number should be a positive number, and it is. Okay, what about this one? Plus, so we start and we plug in pi over 6. What's sine of pi over 6? A half. That's right. So a half times 2 is 1. Uh, plug in pi over 6. 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is, what's that? One half again. Cosine, the x value. So cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So it's plus one half. Then I want to subtract plugging in 0. Sine of 0 is? zero, so that one's just zero, plus cosine of zero is one.
does all of that come out to be some positive number? So I get one and a half minus one. Yeah, it's like a small positive number, which that does seem to be a small positive number. So that seems reasonable. Plus, okay, plug in pi over two, and we get two times pi over two is pi. Cosine of pi is what? Negative one times a negative Okay, plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, 1 times negative 2 is minus 2, minus, uh, okay, let me make sure, okay, sine of pi over 2 is 1 times negative 2, negative 2, very good, okay. Uh, now let's plug in the pi over 6. Pi over 6 times 2, otherwise known as pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Times a negative is negative 1 half. And then finally, we get sine of pi over 6, otherwise known as root 3 over 2. Okay, wait, 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 wait. No, that's a half. Even I need, I'm a little rusty even. So sine of pi over six is a half times negative two is negative one. We did it. Now we just need to combine everything. Okay, let's just like simplify each of the parentheses separately right now. So there's this one, which is pretty easy. That's two. Then there's this one, there's one plus a half minus one, otherwise known as one half. And then the third one is one minus two, that's minus one, and then plus a half plus one. So minus one plus one just goes away and I get a half. Did I do that right? Everybody buy it? So minus one plus one plus a half is a half. Equals da, 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 Very cool. And if you really wanted to be clever, you'd be like, oh, this is like a box that has height one and length pi. Um, so you'd kind of be like, well, what's one times pi? Oh, wait, no, it isn't one. I'm a liar. It's two, right? Um, because of this two and this two. So um, two by pi is like six-ish, six point, what, two eight or something. Uh, and I'm saying that the answer is three. Sure. Sounds good to me. Right? Okay. Uh, sound good? How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Uh, I might have time for like a short question before we're done today. Erase a little bit. Anything else? Let's see if somebody actually wrote something in the chat. So if you have like three separate pages and upload them into the Okay, say that again. If you have three separate pages can you take three separate pictures and upload them all into one Uh yes, that is okay. Like I said, the the preference for me would be that if you could scan to scan, that's so much easier for the grader to deal with it, just having one file. But if you're in a pinch, uh, three pictures is fine. All right. Yes, sir. 
53. Let me see if I have time to do it. Okay, yeah, sure. And by the way, have you guys know some of these problems have that little blue T by it? If it has a blue T, then they're expecting that you'll have to use your calculator. Okay, so it's kind of saying, I don't think you can do this one by yourself. But uh, so 53, you've got the line y equals x. And you've got the curve 2x times the square root of 1 minus x, which just happens to be 0 when x is 0. And it's also 0 when x is 1. And in between, it's positive. Um, so the question is, it probably... Yeesh. That's what's hard about it is it's hard to know exactly what it looks like. So it either comes up over like this. Let me, okay, let me read this. The region between the line and the curve in the first quadrant. The question is, does that ever get higher than y equals x? So it could look like this where there's a little piece above, or it could never get above. And it could be more like this. Okay, so that's probably where they want you to just use your calculator to figure out, does it ever get above? You could set them equal to each other, right? But that's not so great um, because in this case, you've got x equals 2x uh, times, uh, maybe you could kind of get there, uh, but it seems like, okay, so let's see x equals 2x square root 1 minus x squared. So we could divide both sides, so to speak, by x, which is the root at x equals 0. So we know we're not, like, crushing everything. And I get 1 equals 2 square root of 1 minus x squared. So 1 half is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Or what? Um, 1 fourth is equal to 1 minus x squared. So negative 3 fourths is equal to negative x squared. 3 fourths is x squared. And x is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 4. Oh, I don't care about the minus one. So it's just the square root of 3 over 4. If you prefer, that's the square root of 3 over 2. Now, the question is, is the square root of 3 over 2 is that a number bigger or smaller than one? Smaller, uh, I agree. The square root of three is less than two, right? So this is a number that is smaller than one. So somewhere it's saying that in between these two, these actually do intersect. And so it, it is kind of rising above and then coming back down somewhere at specifically the square root of three over two. Okay, now that you know that, now you kind of know what needs to be done here. I'm not gonna set it up because it's very similar to what we've been doing, but you've kind of got this region over here and this region over here, so you've got this and you've got this. And now you need to do the integration and all that fun stuff set it up yada yada but it can be done uh it's a harder problem uh potentially because of the integration so maybe they're expecting you to use your calculator to do the antiderivative uh trying to think is it possible yeah so I, I think that you could probably use a U substitution to do this, but uh, for I think for now, I'm gonna leave it right there and let you think a little bit more if that helps you to set it up. Okay, well, uh, we are basically out of time. Um, we'll see how this went for um, the online folks, and uh, if anybody actually watched it online, you can give me some feedback about it. 
It almost looks like the uh, video is in reverse, which seems kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that can be fixed, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, thanks, and I will see some of you on Monday and some of you on Wednesday. Have a good day. Yes, sir. So, did we talk about I sent out an email. So, on the email, it tells everybody who I broke everybody up into like an A group, a B group, and a C group, and then I assigned which group to come which day. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. You're new? Kind of. Oh, okay. Okay, so, but you, you were here. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you. I love you. Lily, nice to meet you. So, uh, when they're doing the sign, like five or six, five or three. Yes. So, should I be able to know like what is cosine of like five or three? Yes. I should. Okay. Yeah. So, like all of that unit circle stuff. Okay. I know, like the easy one. Yes. And I have a video on my YouTube channel, two videos about the unit circle okay. and how to memorize it really easy. All right. So if you want to watch that real quick, it should help you to be like, oh yeah, that's not that hard. It's been a while since I uh, was doing pre calculus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, I know, I know. It takes, uh, it's easy to get rusty on your unit circle. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, you do need to know it because we just do it like every day. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. See you later. Six point three is